Go Jackers. What's going on, everyone, and uh, welcome to Rec Talk. And as uh, far as I'm concerned, we're officially in the season now. Uh, Tuesday, August 1st, uh, players officially reported um, to start the season, start practice. Uh, and along with that, um, we've had several interviews, different position coaches uh, have given. I want to talk about today because we're all – we want to know about the Georgia Tech offense. You know, it's, it's no secret Georgia Tech's offense has struggled mightily since Jeff Collins uh, took over. Uh, and even with Brent Key in the interim, uh, it was our defense that really um, kept us in games long enough for our offense to score enough points to win. So what is going on with the Georgia Tech offense? Before we get into that, uh, I want to talk about um, – this Saturday, uh, both C Dog and I will be at the first Saturday in the flats. It's going to be um, like you can meet the players, meet the coaches. There'll be different little events. Um, you can get autographs. And along with that, I want to talk about um, one thing I'm frustrated with. I guess I'm going to buy this one, this membership level, but it's not at all obvious to me what gets you access to getting autographs my understanding is like i don't know if all the players but certain players you have to be a tech way uh, member uh, tech way and tech way nil member and none of this makes it clear like what i need to get that uh, it just like generally says you know i get access to supporter events blah 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 i'll probably get the 25 dollar one um, that being said, let's support the program. Uh, you know, if nothing else, at least get the $10 one. Um, but yeah, let's talk about uh, the Buster Faulkner interview. So obviously he's going to be asked about the quarterbacks, but I was more interested in how he talked about you know, what type of offense does he want to run. So he talked about playing through the eyes – of the quarterback and really tailoring the offense to the skill set of the players he has, which is something I really like to hear. I think one big problem with Jimbo Fisher calling plays um, at Texas A&M and why they've struggled, particularly offensively, they way, the way they have under him, is he kind of has an idea or a set in stone idea of what the offense needs to be. You know, we need to run this much, uh, pass this much. Um, you know, this style of offense, whether or not it fits the skill set of his players and kind of trying to force a round peg into a square hole. So it's nice to hear Buster Faulkner say, hey, um, we're going we're, we're gonna to run whatever play we think has the best chance of winning or getting a first down or whatever in the situation. Um, and he said this a few times too, which is inter interesting. He says, whatever offense we end up, running this is going to be georgia tech's offense um so what does that look like i don't know is it going to be something fairly unique to georgia tech or the wrinkles in it we'll have to see now if you watched acc media days you know that key and it seems like key's mindset and i don't know what you want to call it tutelage of how he wants the program run it like trickles down to how all of his coaches communicate to the media, which is also something uh, you like to see. But they they asked him like, well, what did you see on film last year? You know, do you have any concerns from last year as it translates to this year? And so, but you know, Buster's asked the same question about having concerns of what he saw last year. This obviously an offense that struggled last year. What did he think about it? And he really just shut that down in the same way Brent Key did. You know, this is a new season. He even said that he didn't even he didn't look at film from from last year. Uh, he's concerned about this year and winning uh, right now, uh, not what they did last year, and which is obviously can't be true. Uh, so someone asked him, "Well, you? I mean, you at least looked at some field?" And he clarified and said, "Yeah, well." Um, you know, I, I did player evaluations. I got an idea of what they could do, but as far as really breaking things down, um, other than ability, that he didn't really uh, go into that. So, 
I don't. I forget. It, it, I think it might have been Ken Segura, who I thought he was off the beat now. Uh, maybe he's still doing some stuff. But he's like, all right, I'll break the ice about the quarterback competition. Obviously, nothing new to report. Uh, we're not going to know who is the starting quarterback or who's going to take the first snap uh, against Louisville September first uh, until the play after kickoff or the series after kickoff. Um, you know, they're being very tongue in cheek with that. Um, but he did reiterate something he said in the past, which is the quarterback should be the toughest kid on the field, especially in today's college football where most quarterbacks now are mobile. Um, now I'll be honest, just tipping my hat. If it's, you know, the quarterback needs to be the toughest guy on the field and I'm not, this is not at all a diss on Haynes King. Um, but Zach Pyron, I think is, is the guy that, I mean, toughness is kind of his middle name. Like when you break your collarbone and don't even realize it until you try and throw a pass uh, the next play, uh, you know, you're a tough kid. So if I had to put my money on it, and I'm not at all certain, uh, I would say probably Zach Pyron is the starting quarterback. Um, Now, he, he was asked about the offensive line, particularly Weston Franklin. It's nice to have a guy at center that has a lot of experience. Um but there was one thing that concerned me, especially with the center position. And obviously he's not going to say, hey, here's the starting depth chart. But basically said they're still trying to figure out who's the number two uh, at the center position, which he kind of was said about a lot of positions. Now part of that is because we've had such a turnover in staff and such a turnover in roster. Um, but you definitely don't want to – not know who your backup center is, right? As as many injuries as happen on the offensive line, um, to me it speaks to we, we've got some depth issues um, on the offensive line, particularly at the center position. Um, now something I saw Ben in London tweet about, if you're not um, following Ben London on Twitter, you definitely should. I'll, I'll probably put a link to his Twitter in the description. I'll put a link to the video, a link to the NIL, um, the NIL, NIL Tech Way uh, for Saturday. And also, if you're not a member of the channel, um, you get to the, that comes with a members only chat where I post things in there I don't post anywhere else. Um, like I posted some pictures. I'll be taking pictures of all the games I go to, and I will post some of those. Um, on YouTube, I'm having the videos, but I'll put a complete repository of those in the members only chat. You get to suggest a video, which many videos I've done have been suggestions by members. Um, so it's definitely a cool thing to do. Also, if you want to, um, support the channel, you know, I've been saying we've got big plans. I've already delivered on it. You look around at uh, all the stuff we have going on, all the, the, the uh, affect of the channel. There's a PayPal link and a Cash App link in the description. Diving back into it, uh, what Ben London talked about or t- kind of tweeted about was th- Buster Faulkner being asked about the vast majority of this staff being Georgia people and not the university of Georgia, the state of Georgia, you know, uh, I mean, I'm just thinking about it. Obviously Brent Kia tech guy, uh, uh, you know, uh, Georgia guy. Um, now he's from Alabama, but his whole, um, his playing career was in the state of Georgia, obviously Buster Faulkner, Parkview, uh, guy, uh, Josh Crawford experience at, at Colquitt, um, McFarlane who was brought up, um, by Brent Key in a press conference he gave being already pivotal um, in development and recruiting already. Uh, Marco Coleman, I think he's actually from Ohio, but again, a guy who played uh, at Georgia Tech. Um, just a ton of guys with deep, we've talked about this on the channel before, deep Georgia recruiting ties. And um, Buster said, yeah, I mean, he says this is the best state to play uh, basically both high school and college football, and he's exactly where he wants to be. This is his dream job. Um, and just the more you listen to him throughout the interview, it just you're like, man, I, how long until September 1st? <laughs> you know, so he, I, I, one thing he said is it matters. You know, it absolutely matters that a lot of the staff is, is Georgia kind of bred. 
Uh, he was he was kind of asked about wide receivers being undersized, and I just wanted to talk about this because I thought he gave a great answer to this question. Like, hey, compared to a lot of other programs, your your wide receivers are a little undersized. Which, first of all, I don't even know how uh, true that is. But let's just extrapolate that to the whole team. Maybe generally at at every position, we're a little bit undersized. Buster says, basically the 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 best kid the most talented kid, the most well-prepared kid, we're going to get them on the field. And and to me, this harkens back to Paul Johnson, where, you know, a lot of those kids, I mean, look at Shaq Mason, a guy that didn't have eye-popping metrics, or, you know, he's not 6'7", but the kids had a really good career. The guy's a player, and the, the impression I got from Buster's answer of that was, hey, we're going to get the the most talented kids on the field. And, you know, we're not necessarily going to worry about, oh, um, how tall they are, how much they weigh, all this other stuff, which is really was the head of the spear for Collins. I mean, that's kind of – he didn't talk as much about how the kids played on the field because none of them played very well under Collins. So he really leaned into, you know – uh, I guess these intangible things like height, weight, whatever. Um, but I, I thought that was a very good answer to the question. He was asked about the tight ends, didn't say much about it. I uh, said, it's a battle. Uh, definitely uh, Dylan Leonard seems like a leader. He talked about Brest either just saying uh, that he had experience. And then one guy had done a deep dive on Buster Faulkner. It was like, well, at Middle Tennessee State, you know, you had like 57% um, you know, pass and then a, as much as 60 40 when you were the coordinator there. Um, you know, is that kind of what you want to do at tech or how is it going to look? And again, I think Buster hits him with a, with a slammer answer. And Buster said, I'm here to win, I want to win. You know, whatever that means, as far as what plays are called or what offense or what personnel, that's what we're going to do. We're going to put our team in the best position, uh, to win, you know, and he's like, look. I think he even said, I wouldn't be here if things were going well. I understand my job, the pressure. My job is to win football games and score points. And I I just love the very direct, no-nonsense presentation and response of every coach on the staff. You know, like, it's such a breath breath of fresh air where we've come from. Now, look, does this mean anything as far as how we put on the field, no. Uh, I mean, it, it, right now, we don't have college football. This is all, you know, we have to talk about and go on. But I do think that will trickle down to the field. That, um, how you think about this game, what you're focused on, what your priorities are, all of that matters. And to me, that all seems to be co- like coming into focus and in shape. And it's just no BS, you know. Like even Key in his press conference was best like, we're going to find out, you know, we're still looking for the identity and who's going to get a starting role in whatever position. And uh, we're going to find that out. Sorry, I'm making some chicken and then my, my timer keeps going off. Probably shouldn't be trying to do two things at once. But um, yeah, the point being, no one's ever won a football game and said, man, I just wish we would have passed more. Instead of being 50-50, if it was 60-40, I'd feel you know a lot better about that win. So, um, last thing we'll we'll talk about. He's asked about the running backs. You know, obviously Dante Smith being a super senior. Um, the interesting thing, you know, obviously Dante is going to play probably start, uh, uh, be a starter in the offense. But he said of Evan Dickens, and you know, realize that where Buster's come from, where he coached last year, the kind of running backs UGA has had. He said of Evan Dickens, he's one of the most impressive freshmen he's ever coached. So I feel like that's really saying something. Could Evan Dickens uh, be a breakout player? I, I don't remember from the Rumble seat if they listed him as a breakout player. From everything I'm seeing, this is a kid that's going to get playing time and and could be very explosive. So... That kind of caught me off guard there. I know that I knew they were high on him, but for a guy, you know, who's been at, at Georgia for the past two years to say he's one of the most impressive freshmen running backs he's ever been around, um, 
I'm excited to see this kid uh, play on the field. He also talked about the speed of Travion Cooley. This is a kid that transferred uh, from Louisville. He was a four-star when he was recruited. Sounds like this guy's got blazing speed, and if we can just get him into space, he could make some some things happen. But here's the thing. Dante Smith is that kind of player too. So it's going to be interesting to see how this offense shakes up. I, I'm a – our offense is going to be better, but as far as how good uh, it might be or how much better it might be, I'm about as confident on that as um, who's going to start at quarterback. But the more and more I kind of look into this, I'm like, man, we we could take a big step up on offense uh, this year, and I can't wait for it. So let me know what you think. What did you think of the, of the press conference? What did what do you think the uh, Georgia Tech offense is going to look like? Who do you think is going to start um, down one first offensive series uh, September 1st? Let me know. Uh, tomorrow I'll be releasing a season preview video. Uh, so I'll go through every game on our schedule, win losses. And honestly, I'm going to try to do the, my best job of taking my Tech homer hat off and being – you know, pretty realistic about what I think. But uh, anyways, I'll see you guys tomorrow.